we're starting a new series, Silo. What do you think of episode one? I gave episode one a solid six out of ten. Six out of ten because, I mean, it's the first episode, so there's like loose ends, and I, I want to know what's going on. That being said, I am intrigued because of all the loose ends. So so we have a super cool world where it's like there's a global disaster outside, and then you have the self-contained colony that's somehow surviving. And, and because they have like bad record keeping, or maybe there's some coup d'etat type stuff going on, um, they don't know what's real, what's not real. And so this is like, this is like a fascinating to me. And it's a clear, like, it's like a future where things have gone bad, but it's not like in previous shows where it's like clearly things are bad and people have to worry. Things are going okay. And so there's a lots of incentive for people not to question how things are going. And so this, this, is, this is potentially super cool. Um, I'm intrigued, but I'm also worried that the silo is a self-contained city that's been around for at least 140 years, according to the episode. And that's very hard to do. It's very hard to have a, a, a society that just or even just like a biodome that runs on its own just by itself. Um, I hope that the the show, the, the universe, has a way to figure all that out. What did you think about the episode? Uh, I gave it a little bit more. I gave it 7 out of 10. I thought it was a solid opening episode. Um, I'm definitely intrigued about the silo, the history, the rebellion, the outside, all of it. There's a lot of unknowns, so I'm intrigued to see where this goes. Uh, I did like that the silo felt lived in you know sort of sort of dirty sort of got some cracking going on but i do have a lot of questions about maintenance and sustainability which is related to what you said uh and overall i'm excited to see where this go where this is going and what's coming up in this season so seven out of ten hopefully there's, it improves as we go there's some serious potential in the series mm -hmm. let's talk about season one episode one let's do it i did not know it was based on a book apparently it is Oh, did I learn? I didn't know. Hmm. So yeah, let's jump into it. This, for, <laughs> this, uh, we were talking about how this silo is sustained. Well, here they're answering some questions. Here they have livestock and looks like fields of corn or something. Okay. Uh, how do they little, maintain even this? a little mini water, little mini water tower there? Little mini. Oh yeah. Grain thingy, a little cutie guy. Yeah. What was your question? I guess how is this sustained? Because they don't have access to sunlight, which is where the corn is going to get its energy. Which then feeds the cows. So, so far in this show, in this, in the first thing we've said is, is there's an energy problem. Where do these get their sunlight? Um, I'm okay with the corn growing underground because you can do, you can do like UV lamps indoors to help your plants out if it's like winter. So I'm okay with that. You can totally, you can totally feed a plant sunlight using UV lamps. Um, I'm also okay with there not being soil because you can do hydroponics. I'm okay with that, but there's still an energy problem because we need some way to power those those LED those uh, UV lamps. So some of that might be answered with the engineer who we get introduced to at the end of the episode, who has Maybe. who is maintaining this big machine. Maybe that's providing the UV that's required. Yeah, we'll see. Also, so, so plausible. There's a, there's a lot of bio waste associated with this. So if this is going to be sustainable. Maybe there needs to be some kind of recycling program, making alcohol for cleaning and fuels and partying. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. Is this, so it's also this, how many people have we seen in this? Maybe a thousand more, a couple thousand people, maybe even more. How much farmland and livestock does, do you need to sustain a city of that size? There must be many, many levels of this, right? Mm. Stacks on stacks yeah. of cows. It's big. I got vertigo watching this scene. Oh, is this guy clean? Big. Is he buffing the floor? He's oh, buffing the floor. Is, right? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, Very cool. nice. Uh, that buffer still works. That's cool. And here's a picture of the outside through the... I wasn't sure if it was a direct camera or it's a camera filtered through a screen of a dead person outside. And this is supposed to be some kind of wasteland. That kills you even if yep. you're in this isolation suit. Uh, we'll see how that go where that takes us. This also is part of uh, sustainability on this in the silo. Uh, paper. How do they uh, manufacture paper? I see some pretty careless rips going on here. That's right. It is. It it sounds silly, but like if you've been inside a, a sealed building for 140 years, like where are you getting notepads? Right. 
and ink. Maybe this is corn based. Hemp based? Maybe. I, I know they got hydroponics and UV <laughs> lamps in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it is hemp is fairly easy to grow, so but I think this tells us this careless rip tells us that there is paper manufacturing occurring in the silo. Yeah. Because otherwise the people would be like, It's precious. I they'd can't be, they'd be waste careful, paper. yeah. Yeah. Right. This is the kitchen of the two characters who are going to the character map. Let's do it. So this is Holston and Allison. This is their apartment or living quarters. This is their kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I see a regular coffee maker here. I see some grains, maybe rice, maybe beans. Mm -hmm. I see a kettle. Uh, looks like a regular kitchen. I'm surprised. Is that, that is that middle cylinder? Is that corn? They like popcorn there? Maybe Heck yeah. The, maybe, yeah. So this looks like Can we rice. Also, What's this? That looks like rice. Lentils? Green, lentils? Yeah, maybe? Yeah. Green yeah, lentils? Okay. Yeah. Maybe? I'm on board. That makes, that's reasonable. Three yeah. like staple foods that like you can grow large batches of. Mm -hmm. Can we also take a moment to appreciate like how shiny the kettle is and also the coffee maker? Like Holston and Allison, they are fastidious. They take care of this place. I think that just means there's ample supplies of alcohol for cleaning. Okay. Because that would this would mean they have ample supplies of cleaner for mm -hmm. so everyday a little clean. So where do they get that? Must be the fermented biomass. I buy it. What is this thing over here? Milkshake machine, I think. That's a milkshake machine. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So yeah, I mean they got cows, right? They got mm -hmm. they got dairy on surplus. Milk milkshake machine in every room. Sure. Okay. Heck I yeah. mean, all those little parts never broke after 140 years. I believe it. I would never want to leave the silo. Coffee, milkshake, and warm water. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gnarly. So this is Holstein and Allison go to the doctor because they get approved for pregnancy. And the doctor takes out this what they call a birth control something or other, which looks like this. Looks like a pill that's inserted in her ass. I guess it's her side. Yep. Anyway, what the <laughs> hell is this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I is mean, it? I get that they were playing off of IEDs. I mean, I, no. IEDs? I, IUDs. No. <laughs> yes, okay, thank you. I, IUDs. Uh <laughs> Improvised contraceptive device, ICDs. Um, yeah, so I get they're playing off of that, but it's scary. What the hell is this? And it's like it's like in the abdomen on the side somewhere. Like, so these look like little nozzles that dispense some kind of something that's inside this thing. What the? It's reliable. I mean, True, are I they still manufacturing? Are they still manufacturing these things? Or are they reusing them from generation to generation? I don't know. Um, if I recall, some IU, IUDs, there's just like copper based, and somehow the copper is naturally I, 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 something like this. Um, but that gets jammed up the, up the bits, you know? I wouldn't say jammed, but yes. <laughs> this is like in the side. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, this is okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> So as soon as a woman hits menopause, we're like, pop her out, put them in the next one. Like, is that how it works? I have no idea. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've never thought about this type of thing before, about how to do an improvised contraceptive device. I don't know. Maybe we'll learn scary, more. scary, though. Yeah. So this is the office, and this is Allison. This is her coworker, another coworker. Uh, this is looks like the leader guy, and his name is... Uh, Bernard he's some kind of leader I don't know if he's related oh, to the different organizations we hear later on like the enforcers what do they call it judicial I don't know how these Judiciary. are all related yep. yeah so is he part of that or is he different in a different bureaucracy where it's unclear right now I don't know but I was also wanted to point out look at this computer how is this still working 140 years hmm I wonder how often CRT cathode ray tubes how often did those go bad or did we just Advance on to LED and LCDs. Yeah. So assuming this is a CRT, 
Mm-hmm. And how long could that last? I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't think it's going to last 140 years. But mm. maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like once it's built, it's super reliable and will last for basically forever. The cool thing about this show is that we have no idea what the timeline is like. This actually might be in the future where they've had better tech, but then they've regressed a bit because they haven't been able to maintain it. So then they could have a weird mix of like better than our tech and then also worse. It could also be like maybe in the future they've had this super high tech stuff that wasn't reliable, but they also made these very reliable things. And that's what lasted. This is like the not so flashy, but military PC that like needs to go in tanks. So it's super survivable. So maybe when the silo was first populated, it was pimped to the gills with all kinds of cool stuff. But now this is all they have. Maybe it was all destroyed in the purge. That could be. I was also noticing just now. Cute. Little hearts. Cute. And who, wait, who the hell is this? Same guy. Uh, I assumed it was her dad, but <laughs> maybe that's really hand-drawn side piece. <laughs> hand-drawn side piece. Right? <laughs> Actually, now you're saying it, it could be her dad. Maybe artistic skill was lost, and this is showing progression. Mm, they switched to photographs. What is that? I think it's hand-drawn. It? Was it? It's so low res. Very nice. Right now, yeah, I can't tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess, the, I guess we do not have any evidence of photographs anywhere in this. Yeah, we really so don't. It's probably hand drawn. Yeah. All right, Rebel questions. Let's uh, let's watch. There's too many rules. I mean, you wanted to work in IT. It's everywhere. We blame the rebels for erasing our history, right? So why? So they blame the rebels for erasing the history. So who are the rebels? Do we 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 don't know, right? We don't know. It's just whoever was on the other side of a political battle back whenever this happened. So they're, was it the rebels? What did is so was the silo opened 140 years ago, or did the rebellion happen 140 years ago? So my understanding is the silo was open prior to that, and then the rebellion happened 140 years ago. That's when they did like the big old sweep of, of like all the technology, all the relics. Oh, I see. So the people, all the people that came into the silo after some kind of apocalypse was before even 140 years ago. I think so. Whoa. And so then I think the rebel meetings, like they were the ones that were like, no, we can get out. We want to get out. And then the, the ruling people were like, no, we got to stay inside. Mm. So the silo is older than 140 years because the rebellion happened 140 years ago. So the silo could be like 200 years old. And also, I don't know when the rebellion happened. I'm use, I'm pulling that 140 from the hard drive that we'll see later. They said the hard drive was as old as 140 years, so it must be somewhere around there. Why can't we ask questions about that stuff? Why can some goons from Judicial send you down to the mines if you happen to have a relic from the before times? So if you have a relic from the before times, Judicial gonna get you and send you to the mines. Mm-hmm. Um, so before times is anything before the rebellion, like the hard drive we'll see later. Uh, but doesn't include things like computers. I guess it's anything with records. Wait. So that's books, she, hard drives and stuff, right? But computers that don't store anything, they're okay. She said if you have any relic from the before times. So if you got like a hammer, or like a family heirloom from the before her. times. Get her. Get him out. It's a relic. Illegal. Let's hear it again. Send you down to the mines and stuff. Why can some goons from judicial send you down to the mines if you happen to have a relic from the before times? Oh. I mean, she said relic. She didn't say data storage device. That's right. That's right. You find like a like find a a shark tooth. You find like a mega megalodon tooth, and like, oh, it's a relic. Get him out. <laughs> this used to be a seafloor. I'm in the mines. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> Maybe as this goes on, we'll get this will be refined as to what a relic is. But for right now, a relic to me means kind of anything. Yeah. Awesome. You're going to use your sheriff voice with me? There's too many. She's getting all sassy. That's totally true, though. Like things from before antiquity, which is just before when we've lost track of time. Like, yeah, I'd call it a relic. Yeah, even absolutely. though it's like a hard drive. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Some old weird thing that I have no idea what it does. Have you ever wondered what was on the servers they erased and the books they burned? If it was even the rebels that did it. So when the rebellion happened, books were burned and hard drives were destroyed or degaussed, randomized. I don't think it's degaussing. That's a different thing. 
You could um, also just break them. Yeah. Just break them. And this woman, don't remember her name, is implying that the rebels didn't do it. It's the the people in power right now did it. I mean, how would you know? You only know for the last whatever many hundred something years what the the ruling people have told you. And in fact, if the ruling people, the people who won 140 years ago did all that stuff, they don't necessarily tell the next generation. So the next generation who's ruling may actually believe that the rebels did it. Even yeah. if they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Intrigue. Attack on Titan stuff going down. Oh, I haven't seen that. It's freaky. It's so scary, but I love it. Okay, this is a scene where Allison, she's going to go, she's actually there on the right. She's going to go down to the whatever floor to go talk to the computer guy. What I noticed from the scene is the the guy in the blue shirt there carrying the backpack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is totally their their cargo carriers, the cargo couriers. It's like, this is the person that was assigned, like, carry this vase down downstairs. And in the next picture, perfect, yeah. In the next picture, there's there's two people here. There's one guy going down, one guy going up. And so what I thought about this is like, that's a lot of footwork and <laughs> that's a lot of knee damage to these people. Like they're, and also like awesome cardio, but their lungs are awesome. And they're, and they're like quads and thighs and, and glutes, just super massive. But like, that's a lot of wear and tear on a person. Why not, um, why not use a pulley? Well, they must, if it's going up a hundred floors, there's some cargo, they must use a pulley, right? Maybe this is for so. like two or three floors. Ah, yeah. So, okay, I, I see that. So it's like an express elevator. Like if you're going to go 30 floors, like take the one that goes straight there. That's the equivalent of a pulley. But if you're only going to go like 5, 10 floors, then here in this world, like take the stairs. Take the stairs. I'm okay with that. I didn't see any pulleys or any ropes around, but maybe maybe it'll come up later in the series. Um, what came up in this episode is that they definitely do have slides on these stairs. Like for the festival, they, they install slides. Now... That would be super useful. Like, why Why not? Slide down the stairs, climb up them. Just save everyone some trouble. Hmm. That's true. Why not have, like, a funicular, which is one of those counterbalance deals? I think okay, that's yeah. The name. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I could be wrong. But, like, hmm. you know, so it takes a lot less energy to go up and down. I mean, basically an elevator with this counterweight. That's a good point. They're creating health problems for these people because they're going up and down all these stairs. That's right. And it's inefficient, it's using a lot of calories, wear and tear on you the know, steps. The engineers in the silo would know how to build these things if they had gone to the library. Do they not have a library? They don't have a library? I don't think, I don't think they have a library. They must have. A, oh, it was all burned. So they don't know how to That's do. Right. Yeah, it's all burned. Would they have so burned in, the technical library where it has like physics and chemistry and biology? I think so. I think so. I think because like the technical library also would hold blueprints and stuff. And I think they've destroyed all that. Mm. And sorry, if you want, if you don't, you don't want people, if you like the ruling people, you don't want people beneath you being too smart because then they know how to work things out, make things better, make things different. So yeah, I think those are all destroyed. At the same time, Ooh. you've got to maintain society. So if you, if you have a completely useless underclass of people, how are they going to maintain society if there's all these things to maintain that would mean society is completely falling apart here and whatever maintenance happened in the past is what they're coasting on right now there's no way they make it 140 years with that no way wait can they everything's stuck together with chewing gum (laughs) just barely hanging together (laughs) hey but okay we'll see we'll see so this is allison who goes to meet the computer dude down in his freaking awesome office. Look at this. Super, super fun. Super cool. So we got all kind. Of, it looks like we got parts over here. This is just those are like uh, power cables, maybe wires. Yeah, yeah. Various wires. Hobbies for days. Look oh my this. gosh. This looks like some kind of old like USB card with some kind of ribbon cable. Oh, 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 oh that's a mobo. That is a mobo for sure. What's a that's mobo? like the back end? Oh, sorry, motherboard. It's- hmm. So yeah, on the yeah. right there, that's like the Ethernet port, and then over there, some USBs. Like, yeah, heck yeah. yeah, yeah, I see them. Yeah, looks like it's like an old hard drive. Mm. This looks like a maybe a motherboard here. So cool, and then all these parts. Man, it's a little nice. cluttery, but fairly yeah. fairly organized. Okay, yeah. it's a workshop. Okay, yeah. okay. 
There's another view. God damn. Mm. Look at all the tools. Even this magnifying LED lamp. I love these things. Yeah, they're so useful. They're so useful in laboratory. Incredible. Right. He's got a soldering iron. Mm. And all these various parts that he's probably, he probably swings this over here whoop, and works on them. Whoop, whoop, whoop. This guy has so much power in the society. Like mm -hmm. the person that knows how to fix all these machines. Yeah, seriously. I bet he's got a black market thing going on the side. And he's got, he's, he does the thing where he has the, it's organized, but it's all up here. So if somebody tries to come in here and steal his job, they're like, what the, what the? Nope. This, nope. nope. It's what? gonna take you like two years to catch up right. to figure out where things are. Just, just let me handle it. Let me handle it. I got it. I got this. <laughs> so just cool. slip the payment in the back door. So this is the hard drive, the 140 year old hard drive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they plonk it into this and it's scanning. Plunk. And this is the first thing they see. Let's read this. It says searching D directory DIR big fucking mystery checking d d i r x i guess x means anything result no directory found end searching bfm which i guess is big fucking mystery again mm -hmm. checking all which i think what the x is no directory found searching d r library opening i think it's catalyst yeah. silo <laughs> stairwell recipe hierarchy power medical records reports budget year end anniversary data information so I think the list in the bottom, if I remember, this is Allison. This is Allison. She was going through all these, like she was doing combinations. Mm -hmm. I think the bottom is things that she tried and nothing came up. And then the top there, like that's totally like you get frustrated. You're like, what the fuck is this? You just start, start typing in swear words. That's exactly what I would do. But then it does open. Hmm. And here's some of the files. FS repair. Sal Sil. Oh, Os man. Reboot. So, oh wait interesting so that must be something something operating system reboot sil hmm, i don't know i don't know sister-in-law <laughs> nope. silo, silo blueprint silo blueprint silo sil hmm, that's i was yeah. thinking that would have been a typo but it's i don't think it is sil utilities sil os update okay but then silo what? <laughs> what is this naming system? It must be something. It must be like silo infrastructure list. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. Silo internal list. I know. <laughs> great, great. And this is a big, big reveal here. Ooh. He, um, computer guy, looks at the, you know, the Blueprints he's not supposed to be looking at, and he sees a tunnel, which looks like it's down at the bottom of the silo, that goes mm -hmm. to mystery location. This is totally going to be a thing in the future, right? It even says classified on the page. Oh, it does, yeah. George Wilkins. George Wilkins. You, de you detective sleuth. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. So, for the screens we just saw, Allison takes the hard drive and just plonks it right into the stand and i was like whoa this thing's 150 years old easy on the hardware oh, destroyed. let's watch that again they destroyed so like if this slam. is slam <laughs> if it's a brand new iphone sure you can knock it around a little bit it's not going to break mm -hmm. but this is a 150 year old hard drive and it looks like it's circular here so to right. me, this says spinning disks, right. which means very delicate components. And she just slams it right in there. They destroyed. Yeah, you got to be hard. got to be careful with hard drives because they spin at like 5,000 to 7,000 revolutions per minute. And like the distances from the read head to the disk are like, like mm, microns. Small. No, it's pretty small. small. It's nanometers, small. few do dozens of nanometers, something like this. It's, it's class. It's close. Okay. It's cl yeah. So, yeah. so this slam on the, it made it made my goosebumps, it gave me cringe. They destroyed. <sighs> Agreed. But I get it. I get it because like with my with my MagSafe on my iPhone, like I just slam it down and like it takes care mm -hmm. of itself. But if the iPhone were 140 years old, be gentle with it. Be gentle. Be gentle. Be gentle. Yeah, be gentle. 
Oh yeah, so this is Allison just walking around right now. I think she's going somewhere without telling her husband. I noticed these cracks. I saw these too. Is this is this this isn't a structural wall, is it? Maybe it is. I mean, even if it was structural, do these people know what's going on with their facility to know that it's structural? Like, if they've thrown away the blueprints, do they even know what's structural? That's a good point. I mean, they're doing repair work. Here's a dude on a ladder with various sure. pieces of wood. <laughs> Just plaster on top of plaster it holds the whole building together. But if this isn't cracking, this is no good. Oh, good. You're right. And they Maybe. throw away the blueprints. <laughs> That's right. Maybe this was intentional. It's getting replaced. Maybe. Intent Maybe intentional maybe maybe yeah okay okay or maybe the silo is a couple hundred years old and it's just falling apart and there's not much they can do to repair structural stuff hmm. we'll see i think this is going to come up as part of something that causes big changes in the silo we'll see hmm. maybe some instabilities interesting mm. this is later on in the episode they've checked the hard drive a second time and this is the file they say is very important Jane Carmody cleaning. Uh, I guess they make a big emphasis about cleaning the the cameras outside. What did you, what? Why is this important? Do you think? Ah, so if I remember, this was it looked like helmet cam, like like helmet. Yeah, it looked like footage from a helmet cam, and there was like the tree, the one tree that's out there had leaves on it, leaves on it, and there were birds around. And so I guess a hundred something years ago then it looked like things were okay outside. Oh, oh, this is year 97. I guess we could count that up. So if this hard drive's 140 years old, then silo started almost 250 years ago. Yeah, yeah, something like that, 250 years ago. So maybe those images where she showed the, she saw the lush green forest outside from this file mm -hmm. is from 200, no, it would be from 150 years ago. It would be ago. 140, yeah, yeah, yeah about yeah, there. Because yeah. that's when this was taken. But the so silo itself is it, it, 250 years old. This puts Allison in such a difficult position because, like, it's possible that outside could be a jungle. I don't know. I mean, 140 years ago, things could have flourished or it could actually be bad now. Like, this is just such, such an old data point. But if the silo was created 250 years ago, say, when there was an apocalypse, and 97 years later, outside is lush and green, would it re apocalyptize the outside? Or would it get greener? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, it's possible that 97 years after the building of Silo, like the planet would, could still be on the on the decay because they'll be getting worse. Mm, but I see what you're saying. It probably my hunch, my hunch is that if 97 years, if the planet's recovering, then just tack on more time, just more time for the Earth ecosystems to build back up. So if it's lush nine in year 97, you'd think in year... Oh gosh, math, 237, it would be even more lush. Hmm. Hmm. But it's possible, it's possible that after 100 something or 200 years of, of non-human intervention, you can get like bats that are super adapted to that environment. Like, mm, I have no idea what's going on out there. That's true, that's very true. All right, never gonna have kids, let's watch. They were never gonna let us have children. What? I'm not the type of person they want having kids. Who? Who's they? The enforcers of the pact. So she said that they will never let her have kids and that she's referring to the enforcers and the pact. So, so far we have the enforcers, the pact, judicial, and who else? The rebels. So these are kind of four groups. I thought she said the enforcers of the pact. Let's listen again. Who's they? The enforcers of the pact. They want. Oh, it's of the enforcers of the pact. Is that like a police force, separate from judicial? Gosh, I don't know. So, so I let's work it backwards. I think the pact is the agreement that whatever their forefathers back in year one of the silo, they said don't go outside, and so the enforcers of that are like the managerial people that make sure that people actually adhere to it. So. I guess that's the mayor and that type, that tier of people. Mm, I didn't know if it was enforcers as in like political enforcers or if they meant like enforcers like strong arm, like the, the, the mayor and the sheriffs. 
right? It's probably not the police because uh, this guy, what's his name? Helton? Halston, yeah. Halston. Halston is, is the sheriff. So if she's referring to enforcers mm. and he's not a member of it, there must be a separate group of enforcers. Oh. And if the police force is not the enforcers, this must be some political office. Okay. Which, okay. which means leadership people. I think so. Yeah, they would be the ones that would enforce that everyone beneath them runs with the pact. So the enforcers of the pact don't want, you know, people who are questioning things to have kids. Breaking the pact. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Docile, obedient people. Let's watch that one more time. They were never going to let us have children. What? I'm not the type of person they want having kids. Who? Who's they? The enforcers of the pact. They want docile, obedient people. We say this is maybe a double-edged sword, though. If you have docile, obedient people, then you're probably not going to have autonomous people doing good maintenance on society and on infrastructure. So maybe that's why there are cracks showing up. Is they've had all these docile people breeding this whole time. That's right. And maintenance is just not happening. Docile people don't have the mm, self-starting, I guess, the, the, the gumption to like say, like, I can make this better. I can fix this up. And then slowly deteriorate. So looking at this picture again, maybe that's the reason these cracks are starting to show up in the infrastructure. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, so why do people clean? Let's watch. Why do people clean? To get the dust and grime off the sensors. I mean, what an answer. Why do people clean? Well, to clean. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said, yeah. <laughs> no, why do they go through with it? Most people swear they're not going to do it. When you arrested Brent, he said you'd have to put a bullet through his head and throw him down the stairs because he wasn't going to clean. And then what did he do? He cleaned. I think people clean because they hope somehow that they can show people the truth that that is a lie. <laughs> Okay, so she said that people who are sentenced to go outside, they clean, they don't have to clean, but they do clean because they want to show people outside, show people inside that outside is actually lush, verdant, and, you know, good. So her, that's her conclusion. Is there any other reasons why somebody might clean once they get outside, even though they have no obligation to? Yeah, maybe because they know everyone inside the silo is watching them, so they want to give them a good show. Okay, but they're not going to get back in, right? So they'll never know there's a good show. Well, yeah but just but just knowing that like the history of when somebody goes out to clean like all these people gather and they watch and have a party like if i know that everyone's gonna be watching me i'm gonna, I'm gonna make them put on a good show about it so it could be they want to put on a good show it could be they want to communicate to people that it's lush outside and are there any other reasons why they would clean even though they don't need to they might not be cleaning at all. i don't know what's going on here they might not be cleaning at all it's impossible. It's possible that it's entirely just, just like, photoshopped effectively. Like that. That's that what they were. That's what they. That's what they were implying is that they're altering the video feed from the outside, right. or just making a false video feed. And so right. they would totally have the capability, whoever this is, to show whatever they wanted. So when people they're using the showing people cleaning off the lens, which never happens for propaganda purposes. Interesting. Now, why would the propaganda people want the people who get banished to the outside to clean? What's the propaganda purpose there? I understand why they want people inside the silo to see the outside world as being nasty because it gives them fear to stay inside. And then I guess it's it's like civic duty. You've been asked to clean. So when you go outside, we'll give you what you want, but you do our job, maybe. No, but they said they, you're outside the law. You said they said once you're outside of the silo, you're outside the law. Do whatever you want, but people clean anyway. Hmm. I guess I guess it could be like if they went out and they saw that it's actually a, a a desert deserted wasteland, then you could clean the camera to show everyone inside. Like, yeah, it's really bad out here. Uh, my bad. Uh, let me clean it so you can see how bad it is. I, I think that could be. <laughs> could be. At least that's what the leadership wants us to think. Okay. Can't trust them. So, okay. Okay. I still yeah. think it's a little mysterious as to why people clean. Right. But maybe Allison's explanation is correct. Do you say we'll get to this? We'll get to it. I don't Does know. she die? Does she die? We don't know. Okay. Let's, let's continue. Right before Alice, Allison is going to go outside, they fit her with a suit. Why mm. waste one? Why waste why? one? Why? Why? Look how nice this is. And they're steaming mm -hmm. it just for her. 
I mean, they, they even show like taking it out of the box. And so there's not many of these. This is a limited resource and it's like very high quality and it's lasted for a long time. So like this feels like to me, they're just throwing away resources because like you don't have many of these and the person you're sending outside is going to die anyway. Like just put do the wool in their hand. Do we know they don't have many of these? Uh, good point. So there's a finite number because they were like on the boxes, but they could have like a million of them, I guess. I don't know. Well, I mean, they're acting like they have a million of them. So they That's must right. have a lot because That's right. these could potentially be useful. If they got down to five, they, they wouldn't be just sending them out there. Right, They'd no be like, mm, no maybe not. And it's not just like, oh, here's a used suit, go out there and die. It's like, look at the shiny, look at these parts. Whew. Pristine one-time use. It's not just one-time use um, for something useful. It's one-time use to go die. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's not like one-time use to like go clean the nuclear reactor. Like you really need to do that. It's like one-time use, and it's a throwaway. Throwaway. Yeah. I mean, looks so useful. Hmm. Even even hell, just the helmet itself. Even if you didn't have the other suit. That's a helmet. How many helmets? Because helmets, what? If you have a, a safety helmet and it gets hit once, you're really not supposed to use it again. Yeah, it's supposed so to. if you have, you have a pristine helmet that has been unused, why waste it? That's right. They could use like they could use these helmets in the mines or in the engineering generator downstairs. And if it gets dinged once, you say, okay, we're not going to keep it for our people that we want to keep alive. We're going to use it for the people that we're going to send away anyway. Why give why give this this person that's going outside to die? Why give him a pristine helmet? Pristine with eye protection. Mm. Mm, I don't understand it. Maybe no, maybe we'll, it. yeah. Silo things. So this is the door panel that goes to the outside. Look how mechanically satisfying this is. It's so easy to understand. You immediately see what it is. There's an open button. There's a close button. There's a cleanse button because it's kind of an airlock. What's the, what's this for? I think that is the equivalent of like a deadbolt, like you close the door, but when you like really want to shut it, like you deadbolt it in. And so, and I think that, yeah, 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 cool, cool, cool. So when it's closed, you press the red button to close the door. And then when you're like, okay, I'm going to shut it, you take this lever and you like shunk and you like lock it in the place. Uh, and that's why it's so large. So that way you get a large leverage. Mm -hmm. And then when you, want to, when you want to open it again, you go from closed, shunk to open, shunk. It releases the latches. And now the mechanism you hit you hit open and the mechanism which i had issues the mechanism let's take a look so our best guess is that this is about 150 years old something like that no 250 years old 200 years old, yeah so this huge heavy door has these motors that are going to swing this closed and open again and it works, no problem. I was surprised it wasn't some kind of hand crank. That's right. You know, because the motor broke. But goddamn, they know how to maintain. And it's not only does it work, it's like buttery smooth. Like at no point in there <laughs> was there any like hiccups, any like jittery, like no point in there did Halston say like Oh, well, this is this part. I'll just need a little shove. Like, no, it's just like push the button and <laughs> silent. <laughs> Not even like a scree, like a silent. Perfect. That is a good point. I didn't even think about that, but that's absolutely right. It's not just working. It's like better than how doors work now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. My God. Wow. Amazing. So, oh, this is a picture of Allison dead outside. Do you think mm -hmm. she's really dead? I don't know. I don't know. I really, I'm really all over the place in this show. Like I, I cannot tell. So, so either it's possible that she is actually there dead. It's possible. It's possible that she's just, you know, outside is just really hot. She's taking a nap. She'll be all right. It's possible that it's totally just like a, like a, um, generated image of like, like this is, this, this might not be a camera feed at all. This could be all totally just computer generated by the management people that are that are not nice. I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on. Did you ever see a show called Ascension? I've seen that it is a show. So it was a show where uh, they send a craft to 
uh, like Alpha Centauri, um, and it's like a 150 year ship. And so the people on the ship are living in the ship um, and they think they're on their way to the nearest star, but actually it's in a government bunker underground and they're like feeding in images and whatever they need to do this experiment. Totally fucked up, right? Is this what's going on here? Some government agency is like, let's put it in a silo and see what happens. This is actually Ascension part two, the siloing. (laughs) The siloing. (laughs) Descension. That's right. So, so, so I guess, I guess for, um, Okay, aside from like the psychological point of view, like that's totally right. It wasn't Einstein's equivalence theorem. It's like you can't tell if you're if you're in an elevator, you can't tell the difference between being in the elevator and being in a gravitational potential. It's like a, if you don't know what's on the outside, all you feel is a gravitational force. If you don't know what's going on the outside of the silo, all you can feel is like I'm in a silo. Must be okay. And so if this sophisticated like bureaucracy of experimenters around the on, the on the outside of the silo is feeding in these images and all the information they need to make them feel like they're in a silo, it would be really hard to tell. That's right. It could be anything. It could be real. It could be real. That it's actually outside. It's just you're in your suit. And you, they kill you right away. And it's actually true. I don't know. Wasn't there, wasn't there an episode? Oh, no. It was a movie in Star Trek where like the... the the enterprise no no no. what is it the federation the federation was watching these alien species that looked very humanoid but they had like this bunker that was that was camouflaged and the only reason that that civilization learned about the the federation was that it was because the technology failed and became visible so this is the same thing it, it's the people inside the silo don't know if they if they are being watched or if they're being experimented on if they're being controlled like like hamsters in a cage um, unless the technology that is feeding them information fails. That's right. Ooh. So I wonder what's through the tunnel. It's to the maintenance people. It's to the experimenters. Ooh, like in the Truman Show. Right. It's like the Truman Show. That's right. Mm. Or it could be to another silo. Mm. Just like in The Lion King. In The Lion King? Mm-hmm. There's a second silo in the Lion King. Yeah, I mean, not a silo. It's Pr- Pride Rock, the second Pride Rock. There's a second Pride Rock. Yeah, it's uh, it's called the Lion King Three, Pride Rock Two, Ascension Two. Sounds fake. Sounds like fake news to me. Two years later, damn. Time what jump. A time skip. Yeah. yeah. Look at these. Uh, didn't notice this. Regular light switch? Is that a thermostat? I think so. Controller? Cool. Mm. Okay, so two years later, um, the sheriff goes down to the bowels to find the uh, engineer who's now going to be maybe a love interest. Let's find out. There she is. Did you notice the sign language? So the engineers or these maintainers or operators, whoever they are, it's so loud in here that they require sign language, yet they have no ear protection. Their hearing gonna go. The hearing's toast. Put some earmuffs on. Earmuffs, little something. Yeah, shoving the little cotton or something. Cool though, cool though they developed their own like sign language for in the workshop, in the the boiler room, whatever this is. Yeah, and they'll certainly need it when they get older because they won't be able to hear anything. I doubt they get old. That's true. Actually, the mayor is pretty up there. Oh, but her job is cushy. That's true. These people ain't gonna last. Ain't gonna last. Yeah. He's young. She's pretty young. Actually, she's, she's senior, right? That's right. She's running the show. So he's young. So if she's the senior person, she's maybe in her 30s, maybe 40. Right. That's about as uh, senior as you get before you get sent to the... The glue farm? The the glue farm. The glue glue factory? (laughs) Or maybe she gets repurposed to a different job. Go take care of the cows. Something, Mm -hmm. just watch them. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. (laughs) That makes me feel better now. (laughs) So this is the, the sheriff and the deputy and the engineer talking next to the big machine. They said it runs the whole place. This is a generator, which means it generates power. 
I, I guess. So, so the guy on the left, it's like the lower level deputy. Yeah, yeah. He says to the deputy and Sheriff Alston, he says that it, it's a, a generator that runs like the whole, the whole, keeps everyone in the silo alive. Now, generator, um, I take the word very generically. It's just to make something. But I, my guess is that he probably means electrical generator because that's probably this commonly what people say with that. And so this is somehow the elect, the power source for the entire silo. Which guess, then runs all the fans and runs all the, you know, whatever. I guess now that I'm looking at it, these are sort of cylindrical. This one is looks cylindrical and this looks mm -hmm. cylindrical. That could be turbines, which would be indicative of maybe uh, natural gas. Could be oil. Could be. Could be coal. Could be, could could be, be superheated. hydroelectric, I guess. Yeah. Well, no, hydroelectric would use... You could have an underground aquifer or a tunnel of water. I don't know what that's called. Little a little capillary. No, not a capillary. A little vein. And then they're using the the speed of the water to turn the turbine. It's possible. Uh, I so, agree. However, I think would they feed the water into a room like this? I think they would feed it into somewhere else. I think there's these huge turbines that do that. Um, whereas my, this, my other this hunch is, was go, go ahead. Is like a is like a turbine unit that's much more compact mm. my other hunch was since this is I, my, my hunch is that this is pretty low in the silo and so low in the silo underground is ripe for thermoelectric so maybe they're using the temperature of the earth's core to uh, make something happen that would make sense and that would be like super renewable because mm. you know the heat's not going anywhere Oh, maybe so. maybe you can heat up the water at the bottom of the silo stack, and and then as the water rises, it cools down because it's far away from the core. And then now you have a hot and a cold. You can use this to leverage some type of circulation and generate mm. power. Maybe, mm. maybe, 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 maybe. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder what this device is. This huge thing here. Looks like something's getting it. fed in here. Oh wait. I bet that's... it powers the laser. Yeah. Mm. Actually, she, she's, she, you can see inside of it a little bit. Oh. What's going on in here? That looks, I don't know. that looks complicated. And it's behind a thick, thick, thick door. So there's like explosive risk or nuclear high pressures. risk. Nuclear? Maybe. If this is a nuclear core. No, but they normally have, wouldn't they have like a zigzag design where you can't go in directly? Do you know what I'm talking about? Where it's like, didn't make they, the silo. they wouldn't, for nuclear, they like don't make direct paths anywhere so that the particles coming ah, out never have so a So that the radiation. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. but then again, they really probably, they don't know what they're doing. So they're just like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. In fact, there may have been, there may have been radiation shielding that they took out because they didn't understand what it was for. Hmm. Otherwise, it's just you're just walking through a maze when you go to work. <laughs> like, like, what the heck? Like, what the heck? Yeah. Interesting. So hopefully, made the answer questions about what this generator is, exactly how it works, and how that constrains the silo. Interesting. Curious. Const constrains and makes it work, makes mm -hmm. it survive, yeah. makes it thrive. I'm curious. Yeah, me too. So this is the end of the episode. Is Allison dead? We don't know. No idea. Will Holston leave the silo? I think so. He says he will. I wonder what's going on with that. He said the words, and they're going to kick him out. Maybe he'll never leave the silo. He's going to create this whole kerfuffle, and silo society is going to change. Maybe he'll be the rebel number two. Rebel number two, the silo, ascensioning. <laughs> and then uh, how do they get their air? I guess they pull it in from the outside? But if they pull it in from the outside, and they're saying outside is dangerous... Maybe they have enough plant life of the right type of plants that will turn carbon dioxide and oxygen. I, I, don't, I don't know. But that would mean if they have a whole system for cleansing and purging the air of problem gases and microbes and whatever, that means they have some understanding of the air outside, which means they understand the conditions outside better than... It's a good point. Where do they get the air? This universe is a free-for-all right now. They can do anything they want. Hey, yeah, it's wide Curious open. Curious to see what will happen. Me too. Curious to see what will happen in episode two. Check us out next time.